there are really, really just two ways that most of us are actually editing black and white. And I know this may sound like it's oversimplifying it, but all we really have is the pixel layer-based approach like Photoshop, Affinity, things like that. And then we have the raw approach like, like Capture One, like Lightroom. We may be using layers and masks and things like that, but that raw approach is where we can come in on that original file straight out of the camera and say, yes, convert this to black and white. Here's how I want to do it. Here's how I want to mix it. That's what I'm gonna show you in today's video. I actually did a similar video to this for Lightroom just recently, but I wanna focus today on Capture One and in particular, these new Silver 5 presets and how I'm using them. But regardless of whether you're using my presets or styles as we call them in Capture One, or making your own, uh, or using other ones you downloaded off the internet, if you understand this formula, your black and white is going to get better. A lot of times the reason people's black and white is failing is because of what I'm going to show you in today's video. I'm in Capture One, this is Capture One, 23. So I have all the latest features in here. Of course, you always have the styles panel. You come into Capture One, you can go to styles. Uh, there's two style packs that come with this Silver 5. That is the main Silver 5 pack and then this mod kit. And so you can install both of those. I won't go into how to install them here because I have other videos about that and I don't want to bore you if, if you already know how to manage your presets. But if you need the path locations, the install videos, any of that for installing styles in Capture One, it's all over at simefx.com forward slash help. And I've kind of set up my shortcuts so I can press the D key to kind of open that full screen. I can press G to show the, the grid or the thumb strip. Now you can see here I'm doubling up the presets. We don't need to do that. What I'm gonna do is leave this like on the color panel. Then I could do all my presets over here. I could also do this in dual screen. There's any ways to do it. One of the things I do really like about Capture One, it can take a little more time to set up, but you have a lot of control in terms of where you can put panels and stuff like that. One of the problems that most of these raw editors have is a lot of the tools they put in front of us are about color. And what I wanted to do in making a styles pack for Capture One, and now we're at version five, and the refinement has come a long way. I can convert any image to black and white and then just start tinkering around. You can edit this way, but I'm going to just say it up front. If you're serious about editing in Capture One, you need to be using styles. Now that doesn't mean you have to use my styles. I, people tell me they're very good. I'm not usually very happy with the styles that you get with Capture One. You kind of pay a lot for them. You can make your own and build your own system. Getting styles to be really good takes hundreds of hours of work. And that's what's gone into what I'm gonna show you today. But you can build that up over time. Just don't fill up your styles with junk. Don't download these packs of, oh, a, a thousand styles or something like that. Make sure you're curating, you're getting curated packs uh, from real photographers that know how to make styles or you're making your own and you're curating those to make sure they work. Because what works on one image won't necessarily work on another image. When you come in, and I'm gonna reset this with Control R, you have this color image. And I can see here that I have an image that's very contrasty. It's kind of got some dynamic range going on and all this stuff, right? Um, and you can see it needs some work. What I can do with styles is I'll just start browsing over. So Silver 5 starts with these IQ Silver. These are kind of the automatic, you very versatile, use them anywhere. Here's one for street, here's one for portrait kind of thing. These are very versatile. Then we have Naked Silver which kind of has these different uh, names and you'll see it's kind of designed for different scenes, whether it's lo-fi or portraits or HDR, or whatever you wanna do with it. And you can see that each of these provide these different recipes. So if I apply this HDR, it looks good. I also have the darkroom silver, which isn't trying to directly mimic film looks like my Filmus pack. This is actually taking those darkroom and chemical inspired looks with grain and everything that goes along with it and really just making really creative looks. Shadow silver is more intense. It's where you get down and you really start using that shadow. And it's one of the biggest mistakes in black and white photography. I talk about this a lot on my channel is that black and white photographers when they're starting out, they tend to be afraid to work with shadow. If you look at the master black and white photographers, they're, they're always using shadow and just doing amazing things with shadow. If you stop being afraid with shadow 
it'll it'll transform the way you edit in color and black and white. If you guys like this and want to hear more videos about making shadow, uh, just subscribe and, and check it out and I'll be sending more videos because I'm always talking about shadow and shadow hacking. I have workshops and webinars about it and, and I'm always doing stuff with shadow and that's especially important in black and white. You need tools that are really going to help you to control dynamic range but also aren't going to take away your shadow. So what I'm going to do here then is I can say, all right, here I'm going to put HDR Silver A. It works pretty good with this boat. Now I have Mod Kit. And what this is, is a separate styles pack that's just to mod, okay? It's to stack on top. You want to make sure when you're using these kind of styles that you click the three little dots here of your styles and presets and that you have stack styles turned on. Because you can do HDR Silver, then you can come up here and say, no, I want to do an HDR expansion and bring more dynamic range in, right? I want to make it softer. I want to make it grittier. I want to do a sky compressor. This is where we're really taking advantage of some of the new features in the latest versions of Capture One. In Capture One, we have layers and they are a little bit more manual, but the goal is to make this as easy as possible. So I've applied a preset here. Now I can come in and say, well, put the sky compressor on. And you can see what it did is it created a layer all named and organized and ready to go that says sky compressor mask paint in. So it's not completely filled. What we want to do is take this and take our brush and just paint in nice and gently where we want to compress the sky and bring some more information into the sky here, okay? So we're gonna go just like this, and we already have this pre-built dynamic range layer that's doing this. And of course, we can then come down here and we can edit the tones and the settings and the curves, but the idea here with this mod kit is whether it's a simple mod on your background layer, whether you add another layer and you're adding mods, or whether it's one of these MK layer mods down here, you can simply add this and then you can paint it in where it needs to be. Right now, it's only letting us save fairly basic layers, but we can set this up. I've designed these mods so that it puts the layer on, you paint it in, and you're done. Things like grain mods, uh, backlight, HDR exposure, and just these quick little tools that actually can do a lot. What I'm actually seeing is these nuanced formulas. There's oftentimes this idea that's promoted among presets, among styles, things like that. Amateurs use styles, right? And that's the first sign for me that someone's actually an amateur because anyone that knows how to edit well knows how to make and use the tools to their best advantage. Just like when we were in the dark room, we used, the masters used every tool they could to get the best results. In seconds, I'm getting what would take me hours and hours and hours to even get close to all these different variables that I may or may not want on this particular portrait. Because the secret in black and white is that a subtle difference in how we mix the channels and curves can radically transform because some photos are taken at night, for example. Some photos are taken in bright light, flat light, contrasty light. So being able to quickly mix that is essential to get to where your visualization was. It's about getting a good image in camera, having that visualization, and then being able to come over to styles and say, okay, I like this, it looks good, let's see what it's doing. There's actually one less slider in the black and white controls here than you might see if you've used Lightroom, and it's the orange slider. And it's actually very important, I don't know why it's been left out. The cool thing is you can actually just go up to the color editor, and you can edit the orange from here, and even though we're in black and white mode, you're still going to be able to turn the orange up and down. This is very important for managing skin tones. And of course, you can get into custom colors and things like that. The goal of the, the presets, the styles, is to get you 95% of the way there. Now, we're still in a raw editing environment. After this, you could go into, into Photoshop. You could use actions, I make actions like called Black Room for doing more advanced black and white editing in Photoshop. You could go to Affinity. You can still do more refinements in a pixel-based layer editor, but most of our great black and white editing starts here. This was taken on a Fuji camera, and you can see I was shooting in black and white mode. This is probably Acros, and it's on auto, so it's loading kind of the defaulted curve. I rarely use the defaulted curves. I always want to start with a raw file and then do it myself with presets and manual tweaks because I feel like I get way more control that way. So if I, if I switch this to film standard, you'd see it's a color image. But 
this is a little too flat. And this is why I rarely just limit myself to the built-in raw profiles. I can go to something like Renaissance, or I can go down to something like Yosemite Light, which is intense and punchy. And so I can go through and kind of pick out what I want for this, how far do I want to go, and then I still have all these controls. So if I say, no, I'm lifting the shadows a little too much, let's darken our shadows a little bit, you know, let's control our blacks a little bit more, play with our curves. But look at all the settings that we've changed and the nuances and the subtleties of curves and levels and all those things. When you're editing black and white in Capture One, you don't want to limit yourself. If you start manually, you're gonna tire out way quicker and you're just gonna start tweaking around with some sliders. And in the end, and this is the same for Lightroom users, I say the same thing, this is why I always use presets. All the way back to before most of us had even heard of any of these apps, back when we were still just using Adobe Bridge and Camera Raw in the early days before cloud subscriptions, I was still buying from other photographers presets and eventually creating my own, which eventually led me to start developing. Being able to quickly go over these formulas and find the right mix and save yourself hours and just do it in seconds, what it means is you're actually getting better edits. You can see how quickly I'm editing each one of these. I don't actually need to spend a lot of time on these. If I'm doing a portrait, I can go to something like Portraflex in the IQ Silver, which is kind of just go-to auto tools. Uh, some of these are tweaking with white balance settings and things like that, but it's just doing the heavy lifting for you. Uh, silver screen would probably also be a good one here. I could play around with silver skin, silver glimmer, any of these to kind of find the right balance for this portrait. I'm gonna use the IQ Portrait Flex here in this case though. These presets are master presets. These are effectively changing everything. So when I click one of these, it's effectively overruling the one that came before it. That's not the case with ModKit, and that's not the case with these silver specific mods that you're gonna see down at the bottom here. So you have ModKit and you can use that to mod any image you're working on. It's not limited to just these silver, black, and white edits. Mod silver is for things that are really specifically related to the black and white editing, like adding a tone. And so you'll see the way these are designed, all the main presets are these master effects, these master recipes. But anytime you come to mod kit or mod silver, what these are doing is they're only modding the one thing that they apply to. Like if I wanna do a little bit of a platinum or a little bit of a red tone in this. And I can go down if I wanna mix the channels differently, I can click the channel mixes and it's just gonna change my black and white and channel mix here without affecting all the other areas of the tone. You come to the, the darkroom silver, it's actually using grain and detail tools over here in the refine area of Capture One and just making that easy. You also see some of those up here in the mods where you can do a low ISO or a high ISO grain mod. But while most of the presets here in silver will leave things like grain alone and just kind of let you decide or let you mod it, the darkroom silver is genuinely trying to mimic that chemical look as much as possible. So you can see that each of these has kind of a different elements of detail and grain and how it handles it depending on what kind of look it's inspired by. And these can be really great and really quick way to get that luscious organic silver halide kind of look. And so I can just quickly kind of go through here and really just edit these quickly to my heart's content, whether I'm dealing with portrait scenarios, whether I'm dealing with landscape scenarios. These check marks are a little weird. Even when I reset these, the check marks are staying. I've noticed in the latest version, and hopefully we're gonna see a patch for this soon, that sometimes the resetting with styles, the check marks, it's a little wigged out because we haven't installed all of these. We haven't ran all these styles on this particular. Here's another area where I could say, hey, I'm gonna run the Silver Glimmer or I'm gonna run Perfect Portrait. And then I might come up here to the mods and say, okay, let's do the people beauty layer. And what it does is it gives us, again, this other layer that we can now paint in for doing more things with the face and stuff like that. So if I take my brush, let me make it a little smaller. I'm actually just gonna start painting in. And what this is gonna do is I'm gonna work around and just quickly kind of soften up the face a little bit more, just work around here and just enhance this just 
a little bit more. And what the layer does, it just lets us do it really quick and easy. I can also, of course, continue adjusting on this if I want to do more exposure on her face, if I want to lift the shadows. But generally, you're going to find that the way the mod kit presets apply it are probably going to work pretty well. No matter what you're editing in Capture One with your black and white, get your styles, your formulas, your recipes in place for whatever the kind of look you want to do. The idea of Silver 5 is that it works with anybody's looks. You can scroll over and get these formulas and recipes that I've been refining for years to be really effective inside Capture One, and then you can mod those and make them your own with the mod kit, with manually adjusting the sliders. And this is the beauty of editing in native tools. Instead of using a plugin or something like that, where you come in and you apply an effect and it's good, but then it's baked in. You're never baked in when you use a style. And if you use a good style, it's gonna go through. I'm gonna say, hey, I'm gonna run IQ landscape, and now I'm just gonna do some more manual tweaks, maybe some exposure, maybe some dynamic range tweaks and get it exactly where I want it. But I'm gonna spend such a small time with those tweaks. Let's come in here and just manually do a gradient. And then I'm gonna turn the exposure down a little bit on the top here. I still can't save these gradients directly into ModKit. Once Capture One allows us to save more advanced layer tools into a style, I'll be doing that just like I did with these paint in layers that I showed you within ModKit. Because every one of these things that we add makes it easier for us to apply more advanced edits. And when it's easier to apply more advanced edits, to mix things more, to see more variations, and to inspire ourselves, what we do is we don't get lazier actually. We get better at editing because we understand better what's going on. And so that if you're in Capture One, if you're editing black and white, start with that color, with that raw file. Come in and apply a style, apply a recipe, and get, get the look where you want it to be or very close. Do a couple mods, then finish with some basic adjustments to things like exposure, little details here and there, color channels. You can also actually change quite a bit in a black and white image with the white balance. And this is something a lot of people don't realize because as the white balance changes, it fundamentally changes the way the tone and the shadows and everything is interpreted. And so this can lead to some very creative effects. Also turning the saturation up or down is going to affect the image because if the saturation is less or more, it's going to affect the intensity of our color editors and black and white channels and how those colors are being interpreted. You can also come down and apply mods these classic mods like Channel Mods, Green 58, Orange 56, Yellow 12s, things like that. The kind of stuff that we used in the darkroom days when we were shooting that silver film in camera to help us control. You're gonna love this latest version of Silver 5 because it really just brings the nuance, the beauty, that kind of emotion and drama of black and white, the details that we need to make it really, really amazing. And it brings all of that together in a way that you can control, that you can make your own however you want, but that also you don't have to waste time on. You don't have to be slogging through needless settings when you could be using styles to get the rich formulas that are refined the way you need them to be. All right, you guys, let me know in the comments if you have questions. I hope you found this useful. I hope you guys will take the time to set up your styles kit as you edit your photos. And if you found this useful, I hope you'll also check out the Silver 5 pack if you don't already use it. I'll put a link to that over in the comments, but you can find it over at simeffects.com. And we'll see you in the next video.